Hello and welcome to my first of hopefully several tutorials for uh, Sims for Custom Content. Um, my name is Zach, my screen name is Amazing Umu. Um, it's a gamer tag that was set for me automatically by Xbox like 15 years ago, so I had no choice over it. I don't actually think I'm amazing. Um, it just, Umu was taken and it said, how about this? So I picked Amazing Umu, that's great. So hi, welcome. Um, I'm going to do a few different tutorials. Today we're going to start with the absolute basics, where to start, because starting something is so difficult and so many people give up for fear of starting. Um, people stop doing things before they've even started because they don't want to be bad at it. Uh, so people would rather just not do it than do it badly, which I understand. But here we are. You've, If you're here, you've probably been playing The Sims 4 and you've thought, yeah, it's nice. Nice game. Good, good mechanics. You know what is missing? A nice chair, a nice sofa, that sort of thing. Because the stuff that's made in the game is made quite quickly. You know, it's made. It needs to be made as well to run on the the most basic of computers. It needs to run for people with not very powerful hardware. Because if they restrict this sort of game, that then they're going to minimise the amount of people that are going to buy it. So they need to make content that is. Uh, best for everyone, going at the slowest person's pace, essentially. Uh, they also had a lot of content to make, obviously, and with every expansion pack, there's yet more. So it's not made to the best of quality. It's made quickly because they had so much to do. So we can spend a bit more time over this because we're not being paid. This is all for free. So we can spend as much of our time as we want doing this because our time is worthless. So I'm going to talk you through the tools that you will need um in order to get started the first thing you'll need is the sims 4 hopefully you've already got that if you're here i don't know why you're watching if you don't really it's probably not worth your time uh the second thing you're going to need is the sims 4 studio so if you google sims 4 studio at the moment we're on the wishes version uh googling sims 4 studio you should find a page on sims 4 studio.com which is a website the forum where sims 4 studio is hosted and you'll get a long page like this, which talks you through all the different things you can do. And then you'll get some download links and there's an installer you can download and install that. Uh, the next thing you will need is Blender. Blender is a 3D modeling, designing, rendering, uh, animating, video game building tool. It's a bit of a jack of all trades and it's free. It's an open source program and it's what Sims 4 Studio uses to import and export models, etc. So at the moment we're on version 2.93, but what you want is Blender 2.79. So when you Google Blender 2.79, you'll come up with this page and you want to click the link here that says download Blender 2.79B brackets old. This is the version that you want. It's Although it says it's not recommended, Sims 4 Studio at the moment is built in 2.79 or is built using this version of Blender. So this is the version that you will need. You'll also need some image software to edit the textures that you will use to make your object. Uh, there are plenty of options out there, paid, free, trials, that sort of thing. I use paint.net. I think it's a fantastic tool. It's built with a very similar interface, a user interface, a GUI of uh, Microsoft Paint, the base paint program that comes with the computer. But the tools are much better. It's much more in line with modern software like PaintShop Pro or Photoshop but it's just simple to use. And again, it's free, which is fantastic. So if you go to getpaint.net, the website, not paint.net, I think it's some spam advert site, you want getpaint.net, uh, and then go to download at the top and you can download the installer down here. And then you probably want some plugins for paint.net. It comes with a great host of plugins already, things like blurs or, or color correction, that sort of thing. But you'll probably want this additional pack, uh, Bolt Bait's free paint.net plugins. If you just Google Bolt Bait plugin pack, it should be the first link. Uh, you can donate some money if you want to. Um, and there's download links here. You don't have to donate if you can't afford to, if you just object morally, uh, up to you. You'll probably also want some sort of free texture 
pack or website. I use sketchuptextureclub.com. You create an account. You don't have to pay for it. I believe you have a limit on how many textures you can download a day. It's like 10 or 15 or 20 or something like that. But that's more than enough. And especially if you, when you're not doing any modding, if you just spend five minutes downloading a couple of textures that you really like and might use in the future, you could do that every day and have hundreds ready by the time you get around to doing some more modding. So if you're not going to do any tutorial, any building today, First thing you could do is sign up to sketchuptextureclub.com and download a few like wood and stone and plastic sort of textures like that, which is very useful. Once you've downloaded everything, you can go ahead and launch your Sims 4 Studio. When you first open Sims 4 Studio, it will take a long time to, I don't know what it does, I'm not sure, but it takes a long time to open for the first time because it has to like find all of your Sims files and it will take longer if you've got more expansion packs as well. It, uh, maximum like five minutes, really. Uh, it's not very long. We've already been talking for over five minutes. So, you know, what's five minutes amongst friends? When you get into Sims 4 Studio, you'll be presented with a page like this. You can pop in your creator name down here. Uh, there's various different buttons and uh, radio buttons that we're going to be using. The one that we're going to do today is create a 3D mesh. So we're going to create a new object to add into the game. If you wanted to override an existing object with a new object, you'd use the override option. But usually you'll probably be making a new object for the game rather than removing something that's already there. So create a 3D mesh and then click object. And it'll take you to this page where you can search. It shows you every object in the game. They're also coded by the pack that they're in. The little diamond symbol is uh, base game content. And you can see this on the drop down box for game pack. You can pick the different packs that you want content from. Your best bet is to start with just the base game, because that means that anyone can use your files. They're not limited to people with that expansion pack. Anyone has this velvet embrace bar stool, if that's what you wanted to make. So today we're going to be making a simple soap dispenser. There's already one in the game. It's not very nice. Um, there's also just the one. So if you wanted a bit of choice, tough. So we're going to make one of those. It's quite simple. Um, and I'll talk you through the process of building one in Blender. So you can type in soap, soap dispenser, that sort of thing. Click on it and then press next. You'll then be prompted to save it somewhere where you want it saved. So uh, I've got a folder called, called tutorial. Um, soap dispenser and then in the folder you want to save your soap dispenser package now if you've downloaded any mods from online before you know that they are all um, in a dot package file as you can see here sims4 package dot package uh, so soap dispenser you want to save that you want to make sure you have a folder for each item that you make because there's only one file, the dot package, that you will put in your Sims 4 mods folder, but you'll also be creating things like textures and 3D models and different resolutions of the 3D models and maybe different variations of textures. So, and you'll want a folder for each item rather than just one folder for all of your mods. So, you'll save that soap dispenser. And then you're presented with the item here. You can use the right mouse button to move the camera and the middle mouse button pans the camera around uh, and then you can obviously zoom in and out so you can change the name and the description uh, we'll come back to all of these other tabs in a minute but for now if you just want to set your own name and description um, and price if you want to change that too so i've given mine a new name and description and a new higher price as well for, for the most elite sims i'm basing my model off of this soap dispenser that I found on Bing. I'm not particularly attached to it. It's just a simple looking soap dispenser. Um, it's really a great idea to go looking for item that you want to replicate, unless you've got a fantastic imagination, in which case kudos to you. I need a bit of inspiration and I get that from websites like made.com. They do a lot of fantastic, great looking furniture. Uh, also the next.com website, I don't know if it's .com, but next website furniture shops a lot of them do great websites with really helpful high definition pictures that really help you visualize what you're going to make and make it they're great reference images so we're today going to be building this soap dispenser uh, if you don't want to build this soap dispenser it's tough like you put your own tutorial i'm really sorry that's that's what we're doing today so um sit down and let's get on with it so you want to start by opening up Blender. Now, when you open Blender, uh, for the first time, you will be presented with 
a view something like this correct me if i'm wrong uh there'll also be some like black circles in the sky which i believe are light sources it's just to help you get set up the first time you use blender but we don't want any of that so that what you need to do is press a on your keyboard and then press delete and then you can click delete or you can press enter to delete everything in the scene and end up with a blank template now before we go any further a bit of talk about blender it uses a lot of keyboard shortcuts there are other ways to achieve those things without using the keyboard shortcuts but there are dozens of menus you've got this menu here you've got a create menu you've got relations animation physics grease pencil and what that is uh, and then you've got view, select, add, object, and a lot of different things that can't actually be done without the keyboard shortcuts. And, this, and then there's like sub menus and uh, it's just so complicated, but I will talk you through using all the shortcuts and you might want to pause for a moment and get some sort of pen and paper or a Word document or something to write down the most important keyboard shortcuts. We've already covered A for selecting everything. And also if you've got something selected already, a will then deselect everything so it alternates and obviously the delete key to uh, delete things regarding the mouse using the middle mouse button will rotate the camera the right mouse button is to select objects the left mouse button moves the 3d cursor to wherever you click and that can be useful if you move that and you want to reset it you can do shift c which puts it back in the middle again now, moving the camera as well is important. You can use shift and the middle mouse button to pan the camera. You can use control and the middle mouse button to zoom in, or you can just use the scroll wheel up to you. And to rotate the camera, you can, as I say, use the middle mouse button. But you can also use the numpad uh, to get different views. I really recommend having a numpad. It's so helpful. Uh, if you don't, you can go to view and pick the different options down here. Now the first one I want to talk about is numpad 5, which changes the current view from perspective to orthographic project projection. Uh, so perspective is how we see things that are nearer to us are bigger, things that are further away from us are smaller. As you can see, this grid is all equally sized, but the squares on the screen over here are much bigger than the squares over here. I find that not very useful for designing something. Usually I want an orthographic view, which is numpad 5. And that means that every square is the same size, regardless of how far away it is from you. And that's how, if you played The Sims 1, that's how The Sims 1 was presented in this sort of view, an isometric view, which is a, an orthographic projection. Um, the squares, it looks similar to this. If you remember the layout, you could, the furniture all went on this isometric grid. So going back to our reference object, this bottle of soap, it's now important to try and break this up into different components. So immediately, uh, what we need to do, we need to build it out of primitive shapes. So cylinders, spheres, cubes, uh, that sort of thing. Basic shapes that we will then morph and change to our own liking. But it's important to start with basic shapes. So as you can see, this is basically a lot of cylinders. This main body this white ceramic body is mostly a cylinder it tapers in a bit at the bottom but we can do that the the initial starting shape should be a cylinder and we will just make one end of it smaller you've got another small fat cylinder here for the bamboo another cylinder another cylinder another cylinder and basically another cylinder the whole thing is made out of cylinders which is really helpful really simple so then with that reference image in mind going back to blender you want to start by adding a cylinder and that is shift a for the add menu and then mesh and then cylinder you can also go to the create menu on the left here and choose cylinder but again i really suggest you get the hang of the keyboard shortcuts it will be quicker and easier because not everything can be accessed on these menus so you're going to have to try and remember what's a keyboard shortcut and what's a menu option. But if everything's a keyboard shortcut, it's just easier. Trust me, you'll get the hang of it. You might want to write them down. Bit of a steep learning curve, but it, it pays off in the long run. So here's our cylinder to start with. And this at the moment is object mode where you can view 
all of the objects in your scene. And this orange line means that this is selected. So if you press A again, it deselects everything. Pressing A will select everything. At the moment, we've only got the cylinder, so it just selects that. So when you right click an object is how you select it. So we want to make the bottom of this cylinder smaller, don't we? Because if you remember looking at our bottle of soap, it's smaller at the bottom. So opening the object in edit mode, you press tab to enter edit mode. And this presents you with the cylinder. And these orange lines are edges. And these orange dots or black dots, when you deselect everything, are vertices. And you select these by right clicking each one. And you can then hold shift to select more than one at a time. But this is how objects in video games are made. They are made of vertices and edges and faces. Faces are a combination of edges and vertices. Like that there is one face. And when you select the face, the whole face will turn orange. So a cylinder or a circle isn't actually a circle in a video game. It's just a series of straight lines in a position that looks roughly like a circle. And obviously, the more points you add to it, the more circle like it would appear. But it's not technically a circle because some of these points, you know, it's not curved. It's actually a lot of straight edges. So we want to select the entire bottom of this area. And there are a few different ways to do this. The easiest way I would say at this point is to press B for a bounding box. Now you'll probably recognize this from even just like your desktop. You just click and drag um, to select what you want. And you want to select the bottom. Once you're in edit mode, select the bottom of this object so that your view looks something like this. And then you can press S to scale it and that will just make it smaller. And there you've made essentially the pot. Now you could add a few more edges to it. What you could also do is right, you can press Control Z to undo. Uh, you can select this and then you can press W for the specials menu and then select bevel and that will bring in the object like this and carve away at the edge, usually at a 45 degree angle, but there are some exceptions. And then over here in the bottom left is the like the modification modification panel. So this modification of the, the bevel that we've applied, you can then modify the settings of this. So you can click and drag in these windows to adjust how much it bevels. You can add different segments to it. Uh, the profile adjusts how much it, uh, the, oh, look at that goes in as well. Isn't that handy? So we probably want something a bit like this. Because it's not, if you remember the soap bottle, it's not a straight line. It's slightly curved. And so now that we've done that, it selects everything for you. And you can then scale that down to give your more rounded edge to the object. You can continue to have a play about with it. If you're not happy with it, you can uh, mess around with it as much as you want. You might want to scale that slightly so it's less of a sharp curve between this slope inwards and then this drop down you can scale all of this you can rotate with r if you want to rotate parts of it or you can press g to move so you've got s for scale r for rotate g for move the g is silent i don't know why it's g it just is i'm really sorry m is something else so you can just move that around as much as you like, make it as pretty as you like, and then we'll move on. So once you're happy with this basic cylinder, it's time to move on to the next section, which is creating the much more simple cylinder of bamboo at the top here that you can see. So the best way to go about doing this is if you add another cylinder, it should be the same width as the cylinder you've already created. Now you can adjust how many vertices there are around the cylinder to create different effects. So you can use this to create a triangle or a cuboid, pentagon, hexagon, sevenagon, octagon, nineagon, decagon. And then it just goes up from there. So I think at the moment these objects are created with 32. Uh, just be careful. Obviously, if you add more, it looks smoother but there's only so much that your game can handle. And also it's a tiny little soap dispenser. So how much detail does it really need? You need to consider the size of the object and how much it will be seen. 
32 is more than enough. So entering edit mode again, we use at the moment the top of the object is lined up with the uh, top of the soap dispenser already. So you want to move it up a little bit. And then you can select the bottom row with the B and press G to move it up further. To move something up on one axis only, you can press Z to move on the Z axis, which is upwards and downwards. So a grid, uh, uh, the coordinate system is based on viewing the object from above. So if you remember from school, X axis is left and right. Y axis is forward and backward in this case because it's on a three dimensional plane and Z axis is up and down. Uh, sorry. And that's using G to move and then Z to move up and down. So it's not the graph as viewed from the front, it's viewed from the top. So Y is forward and backward on the two dimensional plane that's visible in Blender. So once you've moved up the top of the cylinder using Z, you can then move up the bottom of the cylinder again using Z and line it up with the top like this. And now you've got your two parts. You could also do this in one part. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it's probably better if we do it in two, but you could quite easily do this in one part. So once you've done that, another look at the reference object, and we've got a smaller cylinder here in the middle, an even smaller one inside of that, a slightly larger one, and then one coming out the side, which will need us to use the rotation as well. So on this one, we're going to build the next cylinder inside this one. And the best way to do that, if you go down here, you've got vertex select, edge select, and face select. By default, it's on vertex select, which allows you to just manipulate one point in the world. Edge select will select the edge. And in this case, two vertices make an edge. It's always two vertices that make an edge. And then selecting a face. Now, any number of vertices and edges can make a face. Uh, in a video game, they're usually triangulated, which is where every face is converted into triangles because triangles, no matter how you orient the three points in a triangle, a triangle will always be flat. So therefore, video games find it easiest to render triangles because they're always flat. There's no way to interpret how that face could be. If you picture a square, you could lower one corner of that square and the face is then curved or diagonal. But with a triangle, that's just not possible. But at the moment, this face here has 32 vertices, which will be converted into triangles when it's imported into the game. So selecting that face, once you've selected face selection and then right click on the face, it shows you a dot in the middle of the face. Right clicking, it turns the whole thing orange. If you select more than one, you can see they're orange. And then the active one has this dot pattern on it. So selecting the top face, if you then press I to inset. And it then basically adds another face inside the face that you've got and scales according to the dimensions of the face evenly so you can move the mouse to manipulate this and then left click when you're ready so we're going to put that there and then e is extrude which is similar to inset but it creates an additional row of faces as you can see along here uh, outwards from the face where it already was it's easiest to watch rather than describe it so you can see by using I to inset and make this smaller circle and then E to extrude upwards, we've now made the next bit of the soap dispenser. And then going back to the reference image is another cylinder and another one on top of that. Now, depending on how realistic you want to make it, you can add as much detail as you want. But again, just recall, it's a soap dispenser. It's not gonna be very visible. It's quite small in the game. It's never gonna be this big on screen is going to be more like this big on screen. So it doesn't need to be super duper detail. But I'm just going to go ahead and add the remaining sections of this using the same I and uh, E to extrude. Now, when you extrude a face, it usually extrudes along the face's normal 
Now, the normal is the game's way or the engine's way of saying this is the outside and this is the inside. Now, when you and I look at, say, for example, a tennis ball, it's very obvious to us what is the outside of the tennis ball and what is the inside of the tennis ball. We take that for granted. You know, we're looking at the outside of an object, but a video game doesn't know what is the outside and what is the inside of an object. And this object, we've made this soap dispenser. It's made out of two dimensional faces. I mentioned before that they're all triangles, but it's all two dimensional uh, assembled in three dimensional space. There is no inside to this object. There's just these this single face. There's nothing inside this cylinder. There's nothing inside this soap dispenser. Uh, the outside is the inside. So each face has a normal coordinate. Each vertex has a normal coordinate, which tells the game, this is the outside and this is the inside. And you can preview this if you select everything and then press Control F for the faces menu and then flip normals. And you can see that it changes the shading on this object and it looks blue and dark and weird. And that's because you're looking at the inside of the object. It's rather confusing, but the outside is now the inside. Uh, you basically wanna make sure you don't ever see this bluey, blacky, nasty color because your objects won't display properly. There's another feature a lot of video games, including The Sims use, called back face culling, which is where it won't show you the back side of a face. It'll only show you the outside of a face like this here. So now we're looking, it's rather confusing to look at. We're looking at the inside of the object. It's easier to see it in perspective mode. We're looking at the inside of the soap dispenser here. And if you move the camera inside it, you can see the whole of the inside but if the camera passes outside, you can't see the side that's nearest to you. We don't want that in a video game unless you're specifically trying to create that effect. But even then, it's still rather confusing. So just make sure you're always making sure that you see this nice grey colour and none of that horrible um, blue black colour. And the best way to do that, if you see that, is to press Control N, which recalculates your normals outside. So, as I was saying before, when you extrude a face, it normally extrudes along the normal coordinate. If you don't want it to do that, then as soon as you press E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then you can press G if you want to move it about in any other direction, or R to rotate, or S to scale. And that's how we're now going to make the top lid of the soap dispenser. Uh, so you should have something that looks like this. Selecting this face, E to extrude, right click to cancel because we don't want to move it, we just want to scale it because it's slightly bigger. And then E to extrude again. And then that is then the lid of the object. As you can see, it's this bit that I've just made. Because when you do I, you can only get smaller. It stops at the edge, it won't go any further than the edge of the object. Once you're happy with the shape of this bit, you then need to add the final cylinder and make the nozzle. And you can do that again by adding in the cylinder. Uh, there it is. When you're in edit mode, you can then scale it. But we want it long and thin. But when you scale, it just scales it uniformly. So we don't really want it to scale uniformly. We want it to be taller and skinnier. So the best way to do that is when you're scaling, you press S to scale and then press Shift and Z. This means that you're scaling on the X and the Y axis, but not scaling on the Z axis. Now you can also, you can press, you can press X to scale on the X axis. And then you can press Y to scale on the Y axis or Z to scale on the Z axis and make it taller. So you can do this in a number of different ways. You could scale it down uniformly and then scale it on the z-axis to scale it length to height-wise. Or you could do shift and z when scaling and that constrains the scale to lock in. It says down here uh, to lock in global z, which is great. So it makes the object smaller or fatter, basically. And then you can use R to rotate it and put it in position where you want it and scale it to size. 
And once you've done that, you've then got your finished soap dispenser. Congratulations. Now, we're nearing 30 minutes on this video. Um, so what I'm going to do is stop the video here. And then in the next video, we will cover texturing the object, creating the texture and applying it to the object. And then hopefully, if we have enough time, we will then cover importing it into Sinsible Studio and then into the game. Um, but for now, hopefully you've got a finished soap dispenser and you're happy with it. If you have any questions, please let me know.